Anna, thank you so much for coming oh on and ha- come. Welcome to Do the Work podcast and welcome to the studio. It's so oh good to gosh, have I'm you. I'm so excited. That's my first in person podcast ever. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. I love popping cherries. It's my first in person interview ever. Really? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yay. Yeah. Well, I'm super stoked. You drove all the way here from Michigan. Yeah. Just to see me, of course. Yeah, actually, that's, I, we drove straight here from Michigan. We didn't stop. We came right to your house because <laughs> that's how important it is i can't even say that with a straight face but anyways i'm so excited to have you and for anybody in our audience who is not familiar can you please share a little bit about who the fuck you are and how <laughs> how are we where we are i love i love people's stories loaded question <laughs> um i would say like if anybody knows who i am it's because i'm like a digital content creator um by evening and by day I'm an event planner and by weekends I'm on tour or something. Uh, <laughs> no, that sounds about right. <laughs> I I have no I I wish I had a better answer, but it was kind of like a snowball, like one thing after another. Like I posted a couple things on the internet and they go viral and you're like, well now I'm famous and this is what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life. And that's obviously not true, but <laughs> But it did open doors. And I mean, I'm I'm lucky that while I'm terrified of literally everything, like right. that's my when I say like change is scary, but so is everything. Um, <laughs> You're like, no, I mean that. <laughs> I mean, everything is terrifying. So uh, when people offer me or like ask, like, have you ever considered doing a live show or have you, whatever? So now I've taken this this mental health comedy content off of the internet and I'm performing it in real life um and apparently I wrote a book uh it's I don't (laughs) there are people who are very strategic and like they they come at their lives with a plan and like this is how I'm going to do this and this is how I'm going to do this and every single minute of the last few years has been like ah (laughs) I can relate to that I can relate in the sense of like just being your authentic self like sharing something with the world and being like let's see if this sticks and then it sticks and you're like oh fuck yeah I'm like I didn't do anything I just was myself on on camera in front of you and you you like you like it you you think that's nice (laughs) I was like, well, I I can do that like I, I can tell you about my life I mean I'm living it so which I and I've, I love that's why I like I do love looking watching your content because it's like I enjoy at the very least taking something that is like mental health that is something yeah. that we have that's serious but having a little bit of fun with it of like if you can't laugh yeah. at yourself and like what the fuck are we doing yes and and I mean my story is like long and sorted but but my initial like foray into the mental health world was so unexpected and also so clinical that like I've kind of never wanted it to be that way. Yeah. For anybody else, like when we, I don't mental health, we talk about it and it's this huge, big, scary thing and people don't want to admit that they need help. And, you know, like I, my mom once said to me, I it almost got bad enough that I got a therapist and I was like, you know, you can just have a therapist when things are good. <laughs> like, <laughs> and so I just I just want to come let people know that like this is hard. Everything is hard. And we're all dealing with it. And everybody's may- maybe not saying that it's really fucking hard and that they're having a hard time. And I'm like, hey, just so you know, I'm having the worst time yeah. ever. <laughs> this is not fun for any party. <laughs> Which is like, it's a, it's something, it's a cross I will fucking bear. Of I think for so long, like, I, I'm kind of similar. Like, my journey into mental health was like a family that you just didn't talk about that. Right. Like, keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. Like, even my dad will always call me like, you stop fucking telling people that you're sad. Like, you should right. be happy. And it's like, okay, so uh-huh. let me add that to my list. Just be happy. That's all, te- right? So that's it. Yes. Yes. Keep uh, 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 My parents are the king and queen of keep it to yourself. And then like I also for, you know, most of my life became like the president of keep it to yourself. And then shocker of all shockers. Everything fell apart <laughs> multiple <laughs> times. <laughs> well, I was actually going to ask because like, and like, no, and before I even ask you a fucking question on that, because I do find that interesting. One thing I, I really do want to like yell a little louder is like us normalizing the fact that like mental health, this journey of healing is not pretty. It's not yeah. clean. It's not neat. It's not tied up with a fucking bow. <laughs> it's dirty. It's messy. It's ugly. It's really involved, but it's like such a beautiful practice. But I think what really bothers me, like I started all this kind of same thing where I was like, all right, well, hey, I have something to say. Let me see if anybody cares about what I have yeah. to say. And that stemmed from personally me, my experience being like, 
look up anxious attachment style in the dictionary and there, why, well, president, CEO and founder of like what that embodied. And I think for so many years, I felt like a fucking alien. I felt like every time you turn on the computer, there's some snake oil salesman or some fucking charlatan telling you, no, no, if you're doing that, you're, you should be happy. And it's like, no one's actually saying you can heal through anxiety while also still having anxiety. And then you just learn how to fucking live with it. Right. It's not like it's going to go away. There's no like, like we, like I wish I know, there was the potions and stuff. But it's like, no, like it's going to suck so much, but you're going to get better at it. You're, uh, you're going to work with yourself. Like for me, that's the biggest thing is like not working against myself. Yeah. Also getting to know myself, which was a whole other thing. I was going to say, like, what did your journey look like? Because I always think it's so fascinating to see, like, how did people get on that? Like, coming from a, a background of, like, we don't talk about this. Therapy is yikes. No, no, no. To now being so open and vulnerable. Like, what did that look like for you in that moment of, like, I need to make a change? Oh. So my uh, – obviously, I didn't – I literally didn't even know what mental health was until <laughs> my – until I was 19. And – I was a track and cross country runner in college and I I had literally when I think about my entire life I have n- had never done anything for myself. Yeah. Not once, uh. right? Like I didn't want to be a runner. I was a runner because my parents were elite athletes as well. I didn't want to, you know, like go to this Catholic college. I don't feel particularly like religious, but I'm gonna because that's because apparently we're Catholic and and I'm <laughs> you're a good girl. That's what I'm you do. I'm gonna do everything that I'm supposed to do, and I'm gonna live the life that I think I should live. Like I'm, you know, like the case of the shoulds, and it's like I was living it. If I thought I should do it, I would do it, and you know. I, I just lived my life for other people. I lived my life to look like what I thought other people wanted me to look like and be who other people wanted me to be. And it's like, oh, what's your personality? I don't know. What, what's yours? Because that's mine. Yeah. Like, who do you want me to be? <laughs> like, yeah. Who do, you, who do you want me to be? Because I'm a chameleon and I'm going to be who you want me to be always. Like, and I think of, I think back, it, it just was such a long life. And um, I grew up in a household where everything was very exercise oriented. Uh, and so not surprisingly, um, I had an eating disorder from six to 19. Yeah. Um, and when I was 19, uh, I got injured because my body couldn't finally hit a wall. It was like, we are not recovering anymore. Like this is over for us. Yeah. You, like you're done. You, <laughs> you cannot keep working out for three hours a day and putting strain on this body and then fuel it with Diet Coke like that. You, you're gonna, you can't? <laughs> it's so weird. It's so weird. It's so weird how eight months after I got injured, I ended up in inpatient treatment for anorexia. So that's kind of how it all started. But the 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 reason I'm so open is because nobody wanted me to get that help, right? I was like, something is wrong with me. I'm going to get help. And everybody, my parents said, no, come home. You know, we can deal with this quietly. We can keep it to ourselves here at home. And I was like... Something is wrong with me and I'm getting help. Like, I I don't put my foot down. I don't do anything for myself. I was like, but I'm telling you, something is wrong. <laughs> and yeah, and it really was like, I, I got this 100 mile an hour, like, <laughs> intro to mental health, right? Because my first day is I have a therapist, I have a doctor, a nutritionist, uh, <laughs> a psychiatrist, I'm in group meetings, and, and I live with 30 other women with eating disorders. <laughs> and uh, it was, it really was that. But it was the first time I ever did something for myself, truly. Like, And it was the first time I ever decided that I was right about me. I love that because I think like what that is is so, it's so fucking empowering, but it's such a moment to take this back to yourself to be like, no, I need to speak up. I need to find my boundaries. Yeah. I need to find my voice. And I can imagine like, I can imagine that was scary when you stand up to people that you're like, all of my life, I have been either like shamed if I did this or gotten in trouble if I did this or told that there's something wrong with me. But at the end of the day, it's like either I'm going to kill myself and yeah. then you guys are going to have <laughs> to look and say, whoopsie, maybe she should help. And like, can I ask... What, when you, like, when you experienced that and, like, went into this place and were doing that, was there ever a moment where you were like, it's time for me to go? Or did you feel like, no, this is right for me? Oh, I mean, there's also the fact that I was 19. So it's like, you're a baby. You're like, as you know, as much as you know. Right. And it was also not great because it was this moment of me, like, 
a really empowering moment where I was like, I now know what's right for me yeah. all the time, which is not true. I still was At 19, 19. No, certainly not. Yeah. <laughs> and so it was kind of that like, yeah, I was like, I'm armed and ready. I have like three tools now and I'm going to take on the world. Right. So, <laughs> and you're like, and that tool is breathing. <laughs> yeah, okay. Literally. And it's like, it's like e- I eat now and now I can do it all. And it's like, oh, honey, yeah. <laughs> so cute. But no, <laughs> yeah. very nice try. And like, I my, like one thing that I really love that you pointed out that I think a lot of people really should hear again. It's like, especially when we're talking about mental health was I needed help that nobody wanted me to get because yeah. it's like, let's yeah. be honest honest. When like I was black sheep, I was the first yeah. person out of my family. Like I had, my father was like, he's just is, no was <laughs> raging narcissist and like very textbook. Like this isn't me using a, a buzzword. Right, right, right. This is like when you meet him, you're like, definition. Got it. <laughs> this is where it all comes from. And like a people pleasing mother. So growing up, it was always taught like very much just like, nope, like you shut your mouth. You be a good girl. Yeah. Be, you know, don't you dare fucking talk to any about this. Don't you? Oh, and my mom's like, who was I going to ever talk yeah. to? She's like, I was alone on an island. My brother was sent away. Like the, I keep saying like all those big, crazy stories we're seeing about these programs. My brother went to one. Uh, so he was gone for two years, went to the wilderness program, went to the drug program. My sister had an eating disorder, like went through the whole gamut. And when I was the first one in my family to stand up and be like, hey, guys, I think the way that we were raised may not have been the healthiest. Like <laughs> that was the end of the fucking world. And it's like, I just think that we need to exemplify the strength that it takes to, especially at 19, to stand up and say, there's something fucking wrong. And no, I'm not coming home for us to solve this. Right. I mean, at some point you're like, well, thank God I'd had like, you know, two whole days under my belt when my parents like drove down at a thousand miles an hour to Florida to like pull me out of rehab. Of course. And I was like, um, I was like, first of all, I have a disease. It's chronic, progressive and deadly. The end, the, the end of this story is I die. Like, that's the end of the story. I, I'm already pretty darn close. You know, you're like, I almost have osteoporosis. I mean, you know, there's all these things. And, and it's it, <laughs> and I wish I had thought of that, but it'd be like. We can't you we can't take care of this at your house. Like, can't you see that that didn't work? I was going like, to say, we're here because <laughs> of that. Actually, <laughs> Like it didn't work. <laughs> and while leaving the house, like made it even worse. People are like, oh, didn't anybody in your life know you were sick? Blah, blah. And it's, I came from a really fitness oriented family yeah. where disordered eating is the norm. Not, yeah. not necessarily eating disorder, but disordered eating is definitely it, it still counts. Like if you're if you're just eating over what's it? Um, orthorexia. You know, it's just like eating overly healthy, being overly conscious of everything you're doing and seeing. And and I'm it, they're still like that, but I love them so. Oh, <laughs> I, I can relate because like my I had my sister on and we were talking about like her eating disorder and she was like, you know, this is something that like I think a lot of people looked at it being like, no, no, I don't have one. And then they listened to the episode. And they're yeah. like, oh, fuck. Like, it's not that you it doesn't like you said, it doesn't have to be bad that you have a you have an eating disorder. But it's like, what's your relationship with food? Do you yeah. you know, how do you view that? Like, because I, I know for sure, like, yeah, I would restrict, restrict and be like, yeah, I did it. You know, it's like, yeah, I got this. I'm in control. And then right. it's like, then you're fucking three sheets the wind throwing up yeah. on the floor and you're like, I don't got this. I, I was such a food is a reward person. And so, yeah. you know, that's always my first thing when, when people, <laughs> people will always ask for advice about eating. And I'm like, there's no, like, unfortunately, there's no bandaid for this. I don't know yeah. the answer, but it's just like, number one, food's not a reward. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was like, so cut that out of whatever you're doing and then like go from there. But, but I think of how, you know, we talk like mental health is big and scary. And the reason I'm so weird and open about everything I do now is because because I saw what it did to keep it to myself. I saw what happened to my life. I saw the way that I went. And, and it's not like it ended. Right. You know, it. I just traded having an eating disorder for being a super weird workaholic. And that just ended a few years ago. So it's like this. <laughs> uh but luckily, that background is the reason that I started talking about it online. Right. One, because I lost my job at, during at the beginning of the pandemic because I'm an event planner. <laughs> yep, you were fucked. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I just I had free time and it was kind of this terrible realization that I was in in as bad of a place as I was at 19 at 32. Just I ate food like and I'm like, oh, no. You didn't fix anything else, right? Yeah. And so that's been this, you know, kind of 
since the pandemic started this this timeline of figuring out who I am and what I want to do with my life and doing it online. I, mostly because why not? This episode is sponsored by Chomps. Do you guys wish there was more than 24 hours in a day? Because I do. Luckily, Chomps knows real life demands real ingredients, which is why they make healthy snacks perfect for life on the go. For me, I am obsessed with their jalapeno beef sticks. Like, when I say obsessed, I mean actually obsessed because I half the time don't even remember to eat. I am so on the go. Half the time I'm like running from the gym, going to a client, going to a podcast that at least if I can have something with zero sugar, up to 12 grams of protein and low carb, that way at least I can feel like I'm getting the nutrients that I need. And they have three types of meat. They have grass-fed, finished beef, venison, and antibiotic free turkey. So there really is something for everybody. And right now, Chomps is offering our listeners 20% off your first order and free shipping when you go to chomps.com slash do the work. So again, go to chomps.com slash do the work to see all the delicious flavors and get 20% off your first order and free shipping. Yeah, that's right. So that's C-H-O-M-P-S dot com slash do the work. And don't forget to use our link so they know that we sent you. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. At least like I can totally relate. Like for me, I started all this because I was at rock bottom. Like my dog had just died yeah. and I was like, I have nothing else. Like my, I have a clothing company software and <laughs> it's, you know, that I started years prior and it's like COVID was great, but then good luck surviving after COVID when yeah. you hit it really well. And it was very similar of like, wait a minute, staying quiet and like looking at all of these people that are telling me that what I'm doing, like, okay, you want to be healthy. You want to do this, just do this. And I'm like, okay, but there's something missing here. And that's called how, you know, like, yeah. how do I get there? So yeah. you're telling me to get to that mountain, but I'm naked and afraid over here and I've got no tools. So how are we going to bridge this gap? Yeah. And I think it's so fucking rad to be able to take your story and then turn that into something that where at least other people can look and be like, oh my God, I'm not alone. Yeah. And uh, the other thing about share, I was going to say something and I'm like, what was it? What was it? We'll just continue. We'll just, <laughs> I do want to ask you though, because I know that you have a husband. Yeah. Like, you're yay, married. Tell me a little bit of a story because I know that you guys have an interesting, like you guys were long distance for a good portion of this situation. Like, yeah. can you paint me a picture of like how you guys met? <laughs> and yeah, like what was that journey like? Because so many people that write in about long distance and I'm like, I'm not your girl. Yeah, we did meet the old fashioned way uh, at a party, of course. <laughs> I was so waiting for you to be like a dating app because that's no, how I met my partner. No, unfortunately, those didn't exist yet. Um, you guys been together for a while. So. Yeah, a long time. Uh, since I since we I was 23. Oh, uh, you were 36. Baby. Yeah, so 36 this week. Congratu happy <laughs> congratulations. Happy birthday. <laughs> um, and... So you met him like shortly after your recovery stuff, like all of yeah, that. Yep. Okay. And I was very active in, in therapy at the time when we met and he was really supportive of that, which was great. It was also bad timing because, because I was in a really good place yeah. and I was finally single and I was like, I'm going to focus on me and like, I got to just like live my life for myself, which actually comes into play later. <laughs> but um, he moved in like two weeks later. It's like... It's not, it's, it, I don't feel like I hear of a lot of like, I feel like I would hear more of that from like our parents' generation. Yeah. Um, but no, it was just like, I was so bummed not <laughs> when he walked in and I looked at him and I was like, that's him. Dang it. You know, and you're just like, oh, uh, recently someone had asked me, like, do you believe in like guardian angels or like anything? I'm like, no, but I definitely believe that things sort of like can just happen. Like, I saw him and hardly knew him and was like, I have to marry that guy. I don't know why. <laughs> Which, and it's luckily this worked out because otherwise then if we were looking back and you were like, I should have been institutionalized if right. I thought that. So like, right. yay. But I also do love, love. But I, like, I'm, I'm also not a person who believes in like a f failure. Like even yeah. if it hadn't worked out. Yeah. Somebody asked me the other day, how do, how do you go through this healing journey with with a husband and I said yeah. yeah that's a really good question and I said the reality is that like it didn't have to go the way it went it could it could have gone any way we could have grown apart we could but we just like happened to grow at a similar pace in the same direction which like doesn't have to happen um but <laughs> this is very <laughs> I was still not quite living for myself at the moment I was trying um but then probably five or six years in um he was like I'm so miserable at my job, like, uh. and I, 
I I could never have done this for myself, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, you still have to work all the time. You can't take a break. But I was like, quit your job. <laughs> no, you do that. Me, no, I'm not yeah, doing that. Yeah, I was like, quit <laughs> your job. You're miserable. And I was like, this is like a little... I like to stay delusional, okay? People are always like, how do you just like stay positive? And I'm like, I'm fully delusional. At this least you own it. how I like keep... <laughs> I am like unfounded, believe in the best in everybody for no reason, right? I have no reason to to feel this way. But uh, he, I was like, quit your job. And so he was home and my uncle in New Jersey had said like, oh, I have a couple of weeks of work. Do you want to come out and help? And then it just kind of lasted four years oh shit yeah and so you married at this point or not married yet married yeah oh okay so but okay so you guys had a relationship together and then Mm -hmm. okay so it's not like you were long distance a whole fucking time no but talk to me of like a long distance like how how the fuck did you guys manage that i (laughs) first of all i really like it i don't blame you (laughs) (laughs) um it just it definitely gave me this huge opportunity to kind of for the first time in my life be really selfish with my personal time and really i think you have to think of it that way if your relationship if it's codependent like it's a then long distance is going to be impossible (sighs) but like for me i have a whole life by myself and he has a whole life by himself and when we hang out it's fun and it's bonus time but the long distance part while it was like a little bit hard in the beginning but just not for any reason other than i was picking fights because I just was, right? You're just like, don't leave or whatever. I don't know. It's a little bid for connection even. It was like, but I love you. But eventually I really fell in love with having all that time to myself. And it was that like, it was so nice when he came home because he was a bonus versus I always like to say like, if it, it worked because we were two full people with our own lives. Yeah. And we just, it was kind of like takes you back to, dating the first time around i don't know it just felt magical yeah. it made it made the together times more special which i think is a huge boost when it always feels like special when you are together what i love is you said something my mom has been saying this to me since i was a fucking kid you gotta love yourself no not that one but that is you gotta love yourself more than the need to be loved by others which i'm like yes, yes. So stop seeking everyone's fucking validation before you give it to yourself but somebody she was always been saying to me they're in addition to your life they're not instead of Right. And it's like not 50 50. Exactly. It's 100, like 100. You each have a life. You each have your own stuff. Like, I'm the same. Like, I get excited. So, my partner, we call him tech guy, but like, his name is fucking Ryan. Like, we're just going to give him his name back because when we first started dating, he was like, please don't talk about me. <laughs> so, that's where we got this nickname. And here we are. When like we were supposed to go away, and I like to go to his friend's wedding at the end of uh, in the next couple of months, and I got an unexpected shoot. And I was like, and I remember just going down and I was like, oh, rats. I can't go. And he was all bummed. And I was like, God, I'm so excited. And I was already planning. I'm like, fuck yeah. All right. I'm going to have like my alone time. Yeah. I'm going to like catch up on work. I'm going to catch up on my trash shows. I'm going to call my mom. I'm going to like go for my walks because it's true. It's like, not to say that a relationship, like, no, please. It's not that you shouldn't be in one, but it's so fucking important to balance. Yeah. And and it was like, obviously it's a different situation because we were together before and then it, right. it was like this great opportunity to get to know myself better right and i but i think in any long distance relationship you just have to look at like all of the positives of of that versus he's not here what is he doing <laughs> can, i was going to say can i ask you how did you guys like that and i think this is the biggest difference here you guys had an established relationship yeah. before so anybody that's listening that's like we met on hinge and we haven't met i'm going to do what she did it's like no 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 <laughs> maybe get to know this person like spend yeah. some time but how did you guys with the communication like what did that look like cuz i think that's such a point of contention for a lot of people when you're in a long distance relationship it's well, why aren't we texting every day we need to be talking all the time and i'm like yikes I think our apart communication was very uh, the same every day. You know, like, good morning, yeah. in the morning, how's your day, in the middle of the day, what did you have for dinner, and good night. Like, just, like, every day having, like, this the same time of day. But I always really liked it. Like, I would know I w- it was coming. Like, it was just, like, knowing that, like, and and the text messages feel special. I don't, you don't even have though we're person. married, right? It's yeah. just, like, he doesn't text me when we're home. Right. <laughs> you're like now like, uh, yeah like how's your morning and so it's, it's just we, we didn't really like communicate a, a ton 
I'm just, this is bad advice. No, no. I'm, <laughs> here's the reality. I think because like, but you had phone calls and FaceTimes, I'd imagine. Yeah. yeah. But because it's like, I think the, the actually good moral of the story is that like, you didn't rely to keep your communicate. You didn't rely on keeping Not your connection all. alive yeah. by texting each other because you weren't together. The hardest part about being in a long distance relationship is the way other people treat you about it, not the way you feel about it. I love that, actually. It's a thousand percent. I would go to dinner with my grandpa every time that judgy eye roll and he's not here. And you're like, no, no, he's making his money. I'm like, I have a life like this is my life. Do you need him here? Like that. But it's like every room I walk in, everywhere you go, where's Andy? And I'm like, where do you think Andy is? Where has Andy been for the last several years? Yeah. <laughs> same place, same time. Thank you so much. I, but like, I, I just, I think it's, it's a true testament to one year connection that you guys have, because I think like, if you can be like, I have a friend, same, like she and her husband, they met, they lived in the same city and then she got a job and she was like, not only did he help, but not only was he support, she's like, he'll be pack. And she's yeah. like, then I went, she like moved to the Bahamas, worked. And she was like, and then they kept dating. And she was like, we looked at it as we just had places in different cities. She was yeah. like, we didn't look at it as I'm going to his house. He's coming to mine. She's like, I had an apartment in the Bahamas. Then I moved to Florida. I had an apartment in Florida. He lived in New York. And they were just able to like still find a way to be connected without it relying on, yeah. well, now we have to text and FaceTime all the time because like, I don't know about you. For me, yes. When I was super unhealthy and anxious all the time, feeling like someone was going to abandon me, oh God, I yeah. lived and died <laughs> by that fucking tablet. But once you really start to understand who the fuck you are and you start mm -hmm. to realize like your shit and, and love your life, you rely less on that and you really focus and get excited on actually seeing that person. Yeah. If you're like really confident in what you're, I mean, I'm not confident in literally anything, but like I'm confident in that, like in that relationship, whatever. And if I wasn't like, I'm also, I feel like it's important to know one, your relationship doesn't have to look like anything. It doesn't have to look like anything. Yeah. It doesn't have to look like a relationship you've seen before. Like make your own shit up. It's all made up, right? Like, yeah, it's all, <laughs> I, everything is made up. Like it just doesn't have to look the way you think it's going to look. And I don't know how I, why I, I think I have seen so many of my friends do things different. Yeah. And and I think in 2024, that's just kind of how it's going to, like everything is going to look a little, like you're not just going to meet them like at the bar and then you're going to get me, like that's going to be one in every bazillion. Like <laughs> it's the same thing. Like I hooked up with my partner on our first date and it's yeah. like, I get that. That's not for everybody. One life but, stand. Exactly. One life stand. <laughs> and it's like, and I, I always have, I'm like, we are the epitome of a normal couple in 2024. Like we met on a dating app. We hooked up on the first date. Yeah. I left saying I'm never going to see this guy again. But I think that was really a pinnacle, at least for me too, was being like, okay, so everyone on all these people shaming on the internet, you are not a high value woman. If you would do a coffee date. And I'm like, I don't know. Coffee dates always worked for me. <laughs> I, I fuck with a coffee date. Uh, and it's like, I think that is such a good point of like what the internet is saying. And like, even me, like anybody that'll come to me and for advice, I'm like, hey, you like to do that. That to you, if you enjoy, you want to be emotion, like uh, ethically non-monogamous, go and live yeah. your fucking life. Make sure you communicate with each other. Is that something I'm going to do? Fuck no. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. not. But that is a you thing. And it's like, I think what we need to get away from, like somebody asked me today, I was live and they were like, should relationships and love be easy? And I was like, who the fuck has lied to you telling you that it is? Because those are the people that are giving you an Instagram caption that's like, my love is this and we do this and we do this. And it's like, who taught you how to do all that? Because I don't know about you, but like, I was never taught how to be in a healthy, secure relationship. I never saw that ever in my life. So until I got into it being like, oh, oh, I'm allowed to tell you how I feel and you're not going to yell at me or shut down or leave me? Tell me more. Like, yeah. that's weird. <laughs> and I think that part of this whole messy, weird thing is like getting comfortable and then discomfort. Yeah. I, I mean, like when you, you said communication, it is really important. That's the other thing that we're very, very good at and always have been and maybe where I wouldn't even think of it to answer a question because right. it's just the way it is. Yeah. It's like, if you want it, you have to ask for it. If you need it, you're going to have to, like, nobody's a mind reader. No. Nobody can, you know, but, but even in like the big conversations, I just want to make sure that line of communication is always open, like for everything. And it, even for me, like being in a 13 year relationship and, and planning to be together forever, like that's the plan. But I mean, I will tell him like, if it's not, like, 
if it's not me like anymore at some point like just leave just tell me, me. Yeah. yeah like please don't make it weird take don't me ruin back, my life like... yeah and it or, yeah just like or even you know right now he's on tour with me and i said when you're done with yeah. this just you have just say it yeah. because when it's done it's done and that's fine i just like you're gonna have to tell me 100 like, that i need this and even <laughs> little things like you just if you're afraid to ask for something or you're afraid to say something it's like figure that out this episode is sponsored by better help guys have you ever had anything that you just need to get off your chest and you don't even know where to turn you don't know what to do you don't know who to speak to yeah I know. I've been there. I've done that. There are so many moments where Tekka and I will have an argument, not even an argument, but like a disagreement or something that feels off. And instead of always turning to my partner to have this conversation, sometimes it is really important to have someone else that you can speak to, somebody unbiased, somebody that can actually be there and help support in these moments when your partner is not the only person that could do that. And that is why I love BetterHelp so much. Because when you keep things bottled up, it can start to affect us negatively. And that's why I love BetterHelp is because you have somebody there that you can speak to. So you can have your weekly sessions with a therapist and you also have unlimited messaging in between your therapy sessions. That way you can start to track where your brain is going, what your thoughts are having, like the thoughts that you're having, where are they, what are they? And you can at least get them out of your head and on to paper with better help. So Get it off your chest with BetterHelp this month. So if you visit betterhelp.com slash DTW today, you get 10% off your first month. So again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash DTW to get 10% off your first month. That to me, anytime I get like, I get that all the time of like, how do I do this without coming off like this? And I'm like, well, that's the problem. You're so focused on how the other person's going to perceive you that you've never stopped to be like, but what do I need? Because like I had shared a story about my partner, like he was going through some stuff and he was just acting like he's, he's a little bit more avoidant. Like he goes more inward, you know, like he's the type like, hello, we met me. I'm like very communicative and I'm like, talk to me. How do you feel? What's going on? And he's, if you ask him, Hey, are you okay? He'll answer you, but you can see the frustration and you're like, okay, you don't know how to communicate. That's fine. <laughs> and we went away and he was just, just being a dick. You know what I mean? Like just to those moods where, you know, you know, we've all had that person where there's a day where you're like, yo, what is your fucking deal? Like, why are you snapping at me? And it's like, sure. Could I have just gone with my day of like, I'm just going to not say anything. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't communicate with me. And it's like, no, instead what I did is I sat him down and I was like, what the fuck is happening? And I was like, talk to me. Like, I'm your partner. I am here for you. And then he broke down. He cried. We talked. We had a great day. And then we ended up turning the whole day. And what was crazy was I shared that story online with somebody of like, just because you're dating someone that may have never been taught how to communicate doesn't mean that they're not going to. And I got it like, and it's okay to like, yeah. you know, talk to a partner that like maybe all, like my sister who's more avoidant who doesn't know how to and then when you show them oh it's safe okay and what shooketh me was somebody commented saying I don't need to teach someone or tell someone how to communicate with me and let them know that they need to communicate well, with then me it's and gonna I was be like, a long life and as I said I was like so you just expect that everybody's gonna know how you feel everyone's gonna know what you want so people are gonna know how you specifically want them to communicate with you but yet you've never asked you've never told somebody hey I don't like when you say things like that to me that hurts my feelings. You got, oh God, I'm like gotten very good at asking for what I need, but sometimes I'm a few days late, you know, like I've needed it for three days and finally I'm like, I really need you to say this to me like right now. But um, I was also, oh God, my mom also like relationships wise is a, is a relationship that I'm constantly working on. Yeah. And this was last week or, or it was the week my book came out and she didn't call or text. And I was so upset, right? And so for like days, I stewed on it. And finally, I was like, Anna, just pick up the phone and call her. Yeah. I picked up the phone and I was like, I just really need you to tell me you're proud of me. And she goes, do you not know I'm proud of you? And I was like, no, I, that's no, why, I, need I, you to that's why I just called you to say, can you please tell me you're proud of me? And and, and it's like, it's that way. <laughs> oh, I remembered what I was going to say before, uh, being wrong. Like you, you have to be okay with being wrong. Yeah. If you're not okay with being wrong, like I don't think... Anything is going to work out for in your life. I was going to say, do you think like, because you've been with your partner for 13 fucking years. Mm -hmm. So like, what would you say are the top things that you have learned? Obviously, like being wrong in communication, but like, what are the top things that you've learned to succeed in a relationship long term with somebody for that? Because you're evolving, you're changing, you're growing. Yeah. Is there anything that you've learned along this way that you're like, yo, this is what I didn't know before that I know now? Well, the one thing I just mean, like, we have just gotten lucky that we grew in the same direction. Like, 
I don't expect that everybody on earth is going to be in a relationship for 13 years and they're going to manage to stay like in the same two track. Like yeah. it's, it's just, I don't think it's that realistic. So I, a lot of that I think for me just feels really lucky. Also that we just really like each other. It's silly. Um, but I think being like knowing when you're wrong or agreeing with things you don't like to hear. Like <laughs> the other day he goes, you're really cranky. And I go, I'm not cranky. And, and then, like, like, I see your point. And then, like, three minutes later, I was like, you're right. I'm in a really bad mood. <laughs> it takes so much like, strength. I am in such a bad mood. And it's hard to, like, admit that, like, I really did take that out on you. And I just need to, like, step back into my space and be like, oh, shit, I did that. Like, that was me. <laughs> it is, like, a fucking superpower to be able. And, like, that is, yeah, let's exemplify that. Like, if you're in a relationship, being able to say... I'm sorry if I hurt you or like, tell yeah. me more. Like I had the same thing. I snapped it at Ryan and he, I like came down after and he was like, I feel like you take out your frustration on me. And like, as I'm about to be like, what are you talking about? I stopped and I was like, can I ask you what that, where is this coming from? And he gave me like three examples in that day. And I was like, you know what? I got to hang my hat. And I was like, you're right. I was like, I'm sorry. I'm having a really shitty day. I was like, that wasn't appropriate of me. And I was like, you said something yeah. that really, I was like, now can we talk about it? I was like, and we were able to segment. I was like, okay, but what you did say was fucked up. And he was like, okay. <laughs> and it's like, it's just being able to both be like, okay, I'll own that. You're right. I got, thank you for clarifying. Yeah. But I think it's so, it's so big to be able to, but there's a pendulum that swings. It's like, you yes. have to know when to say, I'm sorry. Yeah. But then you also have to know when it's like, but I can't own all of this. <laughs> Oh God, yeah, and and that's what in ours relationship is is really prevalent. Like Andy lives very much in the real world, and I live very much in a unicorn cloud, right? Like, sign me up. How the fuck do I get to that one? Is just like uh, I just oh my God, I just let go of a lot of stuff, <laughs> and that's kind of I mean that's been my journey. But like I think that helps me in relationships too. I've just let go of. Uh, most of my life. <laughs> yeah. well, I was going to ask you, like, when you started all this, did you have, like, an imposter syndrome? Because, like, I know for me... I have I... imposter syndrome every minute of every day. Perfect. Every day of the week. Awesome. I always think that I shouldn't be in the space I'm in, almost no matter what, to a fault. How have you pushed through that? I just keep You're doing... You're like, I'm here. I just keep doing it. I, I think, you know, it's like the shows where, I, in the beginning, I say, like, I hope you didn't come here expecting, like, some polished, like, song and dance, because, unfortunately, that's not who I am. Yeah. Um, but, like, I just keep doing it. I don't... You have to do it. And people always ask me, too, like, what's your advice for growing on social media? And I say, post. Yeah. That's it. I'm like, no, my, my advice is post. Yeah. Yeah. It's like be a bit tasteful, I'm but like, like I, to put yourself out there. Yeah. I'm like, I don't, I don't have any other advice except for you have to do it. And even once I started doing it, I regretted all of the time I wasn't posting. I was like, what a waste of my life. The last eight months were when I was like thinking about it, thinking about it. No, I can't do it. And then I did it. And I was like, oh, well, this is the best time I've ever had in my whole life. Yeah. I mean, and also the worst, but, but it's a six, it is six of one. Yeah. Once you get on the internet, you're like, it's so lovely until it's not. Yeah. Trust me. I do understand that. The internet. But I know, I think it's, I think it's important. I was like, I'm with you. I talk about this all the time. I'm like, I get anxious before every podcast. I get anxious before every time I have to do something. Even when I record a video, sometimes I'll say the same sentence like six times. And I'm like, you know, you, I, I will find myself going back into the like, stupid, God, God Jesus, Sabrina. And I have to stop. And I'm like, okay. If my five-year-old me was here, do I need to talk to her like my dad used to talk to me? No. Instead, I can say, okay, sure, you're a little anxious, but I trust and we've been there because it's like yeah. what's neuroplasticity. Your brain for however many years was like, hey, you can't do this. So, of course, your brain, your your body is like, no, nah, the bitch can't do this. Like, she's out. <laughs> but then how you actually be able to push through that, whether it's dating, whether it's professional, yeah. professional, doesn't really matter, is by doing it. By saying, I might fuck up, but I know that I'll have my back. Yeah, unfortunately, you have to do it. <laughs> Nike was right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like they really they meant what they said. But it's true. I mean, it, it people will say like, "Oh, you're so lucky." Like, blah blah. blah. And I'm like, I'm not, maybe yes. In a lot of ways, I I believe that too. But a lot of that is because I'm putting myself out there. I'm doing things that I don't think I have any business doing. I'm doing things that, that I do not have the confidence to do. I'm doing things that I don't have, I don't believe that I have the skills to do, but I'm doing them anyways and I'm doing it terrified. And it's like, well, I don't know if this is the answer because I love comfort zones. I really do. Yeah. I'm like, it's cozy. But but I 
you have to do it. If you want something to change, you have to do something. <laughs> yeah, nothing changes if nothing changes. And it's like, even like you had done a video and I was watching it where you were even talking about like, yeah, so like, it's okay to be exhausted. It's okay mm -hmm. to take a moment and acknowledge like, okay, like even when people will come to dating of like, how do I keep pushing on? And I'm so defeated. And I'm like, well, maybe you shouldn't. Like maybe yeah. that's the answer is, well, where are we taught that even when you're at zero to keep going? Like, yeah. I'll never forget when I moved to New York, my brother told me and like, not great advice when in hindsight, <laughs> love, you know, love him thing. But he was like, if you're in New York City and you even have a minute to yourself, you're doing it wrong. And he was like, you should always be bitten. It's like that hustle culture. Oh my gosh. So I lived that for my entire, for 12 years of living in New York. I, my nervous system shot to shit. Yeah. Constant go, 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 go. And being like, oh no, well, you have to go on a date. But Sabrina, you haven't gone on a date this week. And like pushing myself to the point where it's like, you know what is actually you're okay? You're like, hey, that's, you're going to be so burnt out for so long. <laughs> it took me like two years of moving to California yeah. to be like, I just need to, like there are days even now where on the weekends, I literally will put my phone down and I'm like, none of you exist. I need, not, I don't want, I need to sit on that couch for four hours and not move. Because if my body doesn't take a fucking second to just acknowledge I'm pooped, I'm exhausted. This is, it's just, I don't know. I believe in lots of weird things, but two years ago today, I posted a TikTok and it popped up in my memory. It's the only reason I know this. Love and that. I go, the weekend is upon us. And I just wanted to let you know that if you find yourself with a free moment, you don't have to fill it with anything. Mm -hmm. And now, now it's two years ago, you know, but like, but, but my content like that, like is when, what I'm learning that day. Yeah. I, I, I'm talking about it that minute. So it's usually like, this is, People are like, how do you come up with it? And I'm like, it's whatever I'm going through that second. Yeah. Like I, pro I had, was in my car, so I probably just got home from work. And I was like thinking of all the things I could do because I had a day off. And it was like, oh, you know that you, you shouldn't. You don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, ooh, like breathe a second. Like it just doesn't have to be that way. But I mean, I was raised that way. Like, you know, that but idle hands are the devil's plaything or whatever. You know, it's like you should always be doing something. Like, it's that toxic productivity. I'm so tired. <laughs> I, that's how I felt. Oh, boy, do I get that. That's how I felt like when I lived in L.A. where it was just this like toxic positivity and productivity and like of just you always have to be doing and you always have to be in like I remember even just going for a walk and like feeling guilty that I wasn't working and it wasn't until like recently to be honest because I'm with you like it was I I have not the reason I got to where I'm going is because like I didn't stop like I was posting five videos a day consistently for a <laughs> oh fucking year so you can imagine like the bitch can talk but like you can imagine it was the same thing I'd be sitting somewhere and be like oh, video idea and I would do it and it's like even now my partner like he'll see me like I'll get people like write in and to me a question and I'll answer it and the minute I get one I'm like oh. and then he'll look at me and I'm like and then you've set your little boundary I, I love it I've been watching it every time you it. post on your own story you're like I'm not doing that and I'm like yeah I'm not doing it <laughs> I'm not doing it because it's so important whether you're personal professional doesn't matter but especially dating if you're listening right now and you're like I'm a dater Having boundaries is so fucking sexy because what it tells me is, oh, I can't, I can't take advantage of you. I love that you yeah. know who you are. Yeah. Oof. Boundaries are boundaries in your online personal uh, space. You seem to be good at them. I'm not good at them. <laughs> you know why? I, but the, where I learned it is like what we were talking about I, because it didn't work for me. I was right. doing it for so long and answering people. You know, you, when you get to the level that you and I are at with the amount of followers, it's not I'm not being a fucking asshole and being arrogant. It's just you get hundreds of DMs a day of yeah. I need your advice. I need your advice. And after a while, I'm burned out holding space and going, but I'm not getting compensated for my yeah. time. That's a boundary that I had to set. Same when I was dating. When I was dating, I'd be like, hey, cool, I can meet you for an hour. Yeah. I don't have the time right now to spend with someone. I don't know who the fuck you are. I don't even know if I'm going to see you again. And here's the odds on chance. I was 32 and a half when I met my partner. So I had 15 years of my adult life of dates that didn't really pan out into anything. Yeah. And you start to learn boundaries don't keep people out. They protect what's in. And I knew I could only continue to show up authentically as yeah. myself if I make sure that I do contain what it is that I'm showing up as. Yeah. <laughs> what did I do say the other day to somebody? And it was so funny. They they asked me if I could do something or, or come to their restaurant. I don't know. And I just, I said, no, like, I I just can't. And they replied and they go, I love your boundaries. And I was like, 
if the whole world was that way, I like, know. oh, wouldn't it be nice? Like, if you're like sweating over saying no to somebody and, and, and you do it and they're like, perfect, oh, take yeah. care of you. And you're like, what? <laughs> this episode is sponsored by ZocDoc. Guys, we all know that in life and especially relationships, we're going to have to make some compromises on things. So, for instance, like, I'm not going to necessarily get the house that I want if I can't afford it, right? So, I've got to make some compromises to where I'm at. But when it comes to your health, there is no compromise. You don't need to go back to that one doctor who uses your appointment to catch up on the latest things in the news or what's happening in their family just because they're available right now or they take your slightly sketchy insurance. So instead, check out ZocDoc, the place where you can find and book doctors who make you feel comfortable, listen to you, and prioritize your health. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments online. It is a game changer to me. I don't want to have to sit on the phone for six hours to try to figure out scheduling. I would much rather just see it pop up on my computer. I can choose what works for me and I can move on. And the typical wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is between 24 to 72 hours. That's it. You can even score same day appointments. It's amazing. I love ZocDoc and I hope that you guys will give it a try and I think you should. So if you go to ZocDoc.com slash do the work and download the ZocDoc app, it is free. Then you can find and book a top rated doctor today. So again, that's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash do the work. So ZocDoc.com slash do the work so that you can find your top rated doctor today. <laughs> it's, and it's, I had a therapist on the podcast and we were talking about people pleasing and like always mm. saying yes. And, you know, and he made such a great point. He was like, what I want you to look at when you're going to say no is, is this going to be hurtful? or harmful. Yeah. And he was like, if it's hurtful, hey, I'm going to hurt your feelings. I can live with that. I can live <laughs> with saying, I'm sorry, I can't come in because right. I have this. That's a different story than your daughter's recital that you miss because you're like, well, mommy needed a self-care day. It's like, that's harmful. That's different. <laughs> that's different. That's like trying to break. That's like, I had my client and he was like, I don't want to, he was like, you know what? I kept saying, I was like, do you like this girl? And he'd been on like f you know, three dates with her. And he was like, you know what? Honestly, no. And he was like, I, and they hooked up and he was like, yeah. she's an awesome girl. He was like, I don't see a future here. And I said, are you going to tell her? And he's like, I don't want to hurt her feelings. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so then what are you going to do? He's like, I'll just wait a few days. And, and I looked at him and I said, but that's harmful. I said, hurtful in this moment would be telling her, hey, sorry, I'm not feeling it. It's only been three yeah, days. You're going to wait to said, tell but someone that now, you're not interested? Now you're going to wait. And then this poor girl, and he was like, fuck, you're right. And well, so that's he what like- I mean, even with Andy, I'm like, if you're done, like- if you fall out of love with me, please tell me. Tell me immediately. Well, alert the fucking media. <laughs> because I, I just, like, I do not have it in me to be strung along and fucked around on and, and whatever. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But if, and like at the end of the day though, I think especially when you're dating, like I've been ghosted. Like I know it sucks. It sucks to have somebody that wasn't honest with you, that wasn't telling you what they feel, yeah. that wasn't being upfront. But at the end of the day, what I learned was I was like, that's on them. Like yeah, I, if, yeah. <laughs> if for me, I want like you, you showed up saying, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that because you respect yourself and you respect your boundaries and you knew that that wasn't going to work for you and you communicated that. Yeah. That shows me about who the person is versus if it's just, well, I'm just not going to answer them because like I'm busy and I don't owe them anything. And it's like, Okay, listen, if you've had a date, like I always say, I'm like, if you had a first date and the person doesn't call you after, it's like, you know, that's not owed to you. You know, no, <laughs> after one or two dates, if you didn't do, if you didn't hook up or do anything, like that person doesn't owe you a response. Cause sometimes it's just better to be like, never, we tried. <laughs> exactly. We tried. Listen, I went on a date or two with you. It didn't work out. Wish you the, you know, even if this, somebody doesn't want to text you, like, especially when you've dated in major cities and you have five or six dates a week, after a while, it gets really exhausting. <laughs> I know. But like, I just like, it was exhausting. I, I would just not, nah, right? Like, yeah. I have Andy and he's great and I'm going to keep him. <laughs> but, like, if that ends for some reason, like, I think I'm done. <laughs> and you're like, K hey, the fuck. I'm oh. like, I heard too many. <laughs> I've heard too much. Oh, I go to Ryan all the time and I'm like, yeah, we're not breaking up. I'm like, yeah. I, I love you and I'm glad I do. But, like, it's, but even if, even if it were thrown back in, it's like, I think at the end of the day, when you have a life that you love and you've built a and life for you, yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't impact as severely. Right. You know what I mean? Because when your walls are down and someone throws an arrow, yeah. it's going to go right to the heart. But when it's not the figurative walls, not literal fit, you know, you don't have to fucking build a fortress around you. But when you protect your peace and you know who the fuck you are, yeah. it's not going to impact you as much when some schmo tells you something you're like, well, I don't believe that. <laughs> I th <laughs> this kind of goes back to like, <laughs> not to say like, imagine your relationship if it was long distance, like yeah. what's missing from your day to day. 
And for me, it's just dandy. I like that, though. It's not like... My day is fine. (laughs) Exactly. But I like, and I like the framing about that because it's like, so all that's missing is the physical body being here. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, but I still have my friends. I've got my family. And I think that's like when I, people write in of like all this, like all these terrible things that someone says to them, like, what do I do? And I'm like, what you do is you move on with you. (laughs) Not worth it. When you're, listen, I get it. When I, when you're a six year old and when we regress and it's like at six, you're right. You have nowhere to go. Like your parents fuck you. Your parents, your parents leave you in a room. You're in that room. And that's. (laughs) But when. When you're an adult and you're like, oh, you mean I get to take myself out of that room? It's like, you get to go live the life that you want to live and you get to choose who the fuck is part of it. Yeah. And there's like, the the, the reality is that like, people just aren't going to like you. And that was a really, a really hard one for me, especially like as a people pleaser to come to terms with like, Mm. people just aren't going to like you. And, but the second that I came to terms with that and the second that like, I really believed that, the way the lightness in my life because I think that way the other way as well. Like, I don't worry about what other people are doing. I think about how much of my time and energy I used to spend, like, being annoyed about what someone else was doing. And it's like, not my business. <laughs> like, I think of how much of my brain space I was spending. And I, and I think of it this this way, too. Like, it's different because, you know, they, these people have podcasts about TV shows. But the amount of time yeah. you're spending talking about other people's lives or thinking about other people's lives. I'm like, not to sound selfish, but I hardly think of other people. But, but you know what? But that is, I'm glad you said that because for fuck's sake, I wish people listened when I say, I'm like, people aren't thinking about you. You're the main center. I'm the yeah. main character of my movie. I'm a fucking extra on everybody else's. Some people don't even see me walk across the fucking backdrop of their sh- of their set. Yeah. That's how insignificant. And it's so true because I think especially like, I always bring it back to dating because especially in that time, I have had it where like, I think that this person's thinking all of these things. And then you find out you're like, that person didn't even fucking think about you once. <laughs> Not, they, they didn't. Like they just didn't. Or yeah. like that one embarrassing thing that you said, it's like that person probably didn't even fucking hear it. But we magnify everything because we're we're egocentric. Like I yeah. get that. We're, it's all about us. It's all about us. And it's like, we all, every person has narcissism. We all have an element of, I think right. of me, that's just being, that's literally just psychology. But it's a matter of like, well, how far do we take that? Yeah. But I think it's so true. Like if you have a life that you are building right now, if you have a life that you're excited about, even just excited about going on your walks every morning. Like I had to, even when I lived in LA and I was not excited about much living there, I found little things every day just so that I could look and be like, okay, well, I've been single for the last year living here, right? Okay. So I have this new person here. The fantasy of what this could be but it's not, right? We're, we're here where we are right now. And so instead I was like, I'm going to water this little pot of land because the more I focus on you and the more I ask, why is he doing this? Why is she acting this way? Guess what I'm doing? I'm not focused on me. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah. I, I There's a, a little thing I said, I don't know, a long time ago. And I <laughs> it was like, were you happy? And it's, <laughs> And I said, I don't know, but look how productive I was. <laughs> right <laughs> so true it's like such a such a hard truth to like look back on your whole life and be like well i was busy <laughs> that's and that's like and it's so funny i thought about this yesterday i, or just I don't know something. why that reminded me of that but it no but it's true but it did <laughs> i was thinking about that yesterday because like it's so true like i think we notice like i know that like when my dog passed away when my mom got sick like those are the moments that slap you in the face that you're like oh my God, we have finite resources here. Like that is mm-hmm. not forever. And I thought about it the other day of like, I think about, just, you know, you think about when people are like, oh, I wouldn't trade it for the world, right? You think about back on the time of like, oh, I wouldn't, you know, that experience, I wouldn't trade Uh-oh. it for the world. And I thought back, I would totally trade a lot. <laughs> and I was thinking about being where I'm at as a woman in her 30s, not having kids, not, you know, and, and not, sure if I, <laughs> not sure that I want to, to be honest. And I thought about it, okay, if I had had kids at 20, I wouldn't be where I'm at. It's like, you know, of course I'd have a a 13 year old child right now. My life would be completely different. And I was like, okay, grateful. (laughs) Grateful I didn't necessarily know. Cause I, oh, it was that somebody was telling me that their mom is like close in age to them. And I was like, man, 
what would that feel like if you're, you know, your mom had you at 18 or 19? Yeah. Like my mom had me at 35. So like my mom is now in her almost 70. Yeah. And it's like, fuck, you know? And so I think about that of like, you know, Ryan and I talk about this. I'm like, I don't want to be 45 having a kid. Like, and that's just right. a personal thing. Like I just, I don't want to do that. It's, yeah. I don't want them bad enough. But then I had that thought of, well, but what did I do with my 20s instead? See, I didn't have kids. And I literally for the first time made the admission where I was like, I wouldn't have traded that for the world because I wasted my fucking 20s. I wasted my 20s worried about if this guy was going to call me, worried about if somebody liked me, worried about I wasted away. I didn't save any fucking money. I didn't advance my career. I lived in New York going paycheck to paycheck because all I was waiting for was someone to come fucking save me. And it wasn't until I actually had to own up to myself and be like, this is the bitch that's coming to save yeah. me. Nobody else <laughs> is. That Then I realized now I refuse to look back on my tw my 30s like I did my 20s. I will not allow myself to look back on that time and say, I, w I fucking wasted it worrying about everybody else and I was so far removed from myself. It's like, so, it's so, life is, <laughs> life is so long and, and, and you're all you get. You no, all nothing else. Like not one other thing in your life is guaranteed. Nope. The only person who has to be with you is you and like. It's the longest relationship. Yeah. And, and when I think about how long I stayed like in a job where mm. my boss was just awful, right? And I don't, I stayed just to prove nothing to nobody, right? Like, no. I can do it. I'm tough. And it's like, no, you're fucking miserable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like now I look at my life as, as, as I'm the boss of it. And it's just like, what do you, what do you, how do you want to treat yourself? How do you want to organize your day to day life? Like, how do you yeah. want to build yourself up? to be more successful or not. Like I say that too. There sometimes you're looking the wrong direction. There there are, you know, sometimes you we're so conditioned to look up and forward and and every once in a while that's the wrong direction, right? Like and even for me right now with tour and all of these other things. Like I'm taking a huge step back at work. Yeah. And that's something that didn't feel possible to me because you live your whole life moving forward. Right. And it's like, you can move forward by moving backward. You can move forward by walking away. And, you know, even lots of times now I have to tell myself, like, baby steps are steps and backward steps are steps. Like, you're moving. <laughs> it's at least, exactly. It's like, at least you're doing something. Because, like, I'm the same. Like, there are days where, like, I had to lessen my workload in the last three months because I'm working on a course and I'm working yeah. on a book and all, all of that stuff. And I remember even just, like, the panic ensued. And then my friend actually said something to me that, fucking her name is Elise. She's a, such a great dating coach. And she, we were talking the other day and she was like, Sabrina, you're acting as if the buffet closed. And she was like, you got to shift that thinking. You're at the buffet and there's always, there's always going to be newness. You're always going to have more. She's like, the plate of food that you have in front of you isn't it. Yeah. <laughs> and that allowed me to start being like, oh my God, you're right. I can take a day where I focus on other things, take yeah. a step back if you will, but that'll help me propel 30 forward. Yeah. Because I know that I'm, I'm doing something now that's going to help for the the long run. Yeah. And I think just being able to get rid of the shame and guilt around that. Oh my woof. gosh. Guilt is so heavy and it just like never goes away. It doesn't stop. And like, <laughs> I think, I think like what I, the reason I was so excited to have you on was because I really do want to normalize the experience of mental health. Like I'm just so tired yeah. of it being this package that none of us are able to afford because it's not realistic. And what is realistic yeah. is that it's going to be a journey of like falling a ton, scraping your knees and getting back up to being like, but the bitch still has another day in her. So we're going to keep going. <laughs> All you have to be is here. And, and, and that can be like a battle. Yeah. Be, being here every day. I like to remind people like, it, it, it's not going to look the same for everybody. Like when they're like, well, I'm really like, I'm lazy and I'm not accomplishing anything. And I'm like, can you tell me like what's going on inside your mind, in your brain? Right. Like, and then tell me you're not accomplishing anything. How exhausted, like how many scenarios have you run through today? Of, it's a lot of thoughts. <laughs> how many thoughts? Like, yeah, the brains are <laughs> tough. They're quick moving and they lie and they're mean and they know you. <laughs> and they're not. And the biggest thing that I learned is like, they're not meant for the world that we're living in either. Our no. bodies and our, our nervous system and our brain are meant no. for hunters and gatherers living in groups of fifth, no more than 50 without technology, without everything. What we've done is we f we've just taken our bodies yeah. from like 1700 that were doing great and we threw them in now and we're like, 
fucker. Why aren't you figuring this out? And now, like, I always say, like, we were not meant to know this much, but it's like, but now we can know this much, and now you're required to know this much, and people are going to yell at you if you don't know it and talk about it constantly, and you're like, listen, I'm a mental health content creator. Like, I I can unfortunately not save the world. I don't need to talk about geopolitics right now when I'm talking about relationships, and that doesn't need to be I'm my place. I'm just trying to focus on you staying alive. Exactly. I'm trying I'm, to get through the fucking day. I, I, I am focused on <laughs> the, the basics here, okay? Like, we need to live our lives alive. <laughs> That's, you know what? Honestly, and like, I remember that was... One thing that my therapist taught, like, really reminded me. Every time I'd come into my session, this was, like, one of the first therapists I ever had. And she'd be like, how are you doing today? And I'd be like, I'm okay. And she would stop me and she'd be like, and we'll take that for today because for today, that's great. And she was like, you're okay. I'll take an okay. Yeah. And it helped me reframe where I was like, because I remember, you know, when people ask you like, hey, how are you? And you're like, good, thanks. And I tried it for a little bit where I was honest, where I'd be like, I'm really fucking stressed, actually. And you see people's an auto, oh, good. Uh, what? Yeah. Like they couldn't. Couldn't comprehend with like being like, yeah, and like, that's okay. I can normalize that for today. I feel like shit. And then tomorrow, I'll probably be fine. Yeah, the world's really heavy. Like, it's okay that to not have a good day. (laughs) It is so okay to not have a good day. And I think that is, it's okay to not have a good day. It's okay to not have a good week. It's okay to not have a good month. And it's okay to not have a good year. Yeah. That doesn't mean you don't have a good life. That just means that for now. It's not forever. It's not forever. It's a bad day. It's a bad, you know, it's not a bad forever. Oh, it's hard to think about sometimes when you're trapped in it, but it's like that, like, take a step back, like, <laughs> look at it. What's wrong? Nothing. Okay. Yeah. I always do I'm like <laughs> speed bump, just like for fuck's sake, put a, put a space between the what you are now to fucked. Like, it doesn't have yeah. to, the pendulum doesn't have to swing to this equals, like, the person that didn't call you back after a date doesn't now mean that you're a piece of shit yeah. and that there's something wrong with you. What that just meant was that's not a person you're gonna have another yeah. date with. We don't need to create this narrative. We don't have to create a whole thing. It could just be, I see this for what it is right now, yeah. not for something that I want it to be. The other thing that's like, that can really bum you out or whatever is, is you, you overthink, I don't wanna say you, that's just proverbial you, but yeah. Yes. I will overthink not being happy, right? Yeah. Like, what am I doing wrong? Like, what? And it, it's like, happy's not like, doesn't live somewhere. It's not a finish line. It's not like a it's destination. A- it It's it's not always. It's it's little moments. Like, I have to remind myself all the time, like, hey, happy isn't living somewhere. Happy, happy isn't when you lose those 20 pounds. Happy isn't when you get that promotion. And happy isn't like, happy, like, maybe those moments will bring you a little bit of joy. I don't know. But the reality is like that there's it's we ha- all have this finish line complex of like when I get there, that's where it is. And it's like it's elusive. <laughs> I learned that when I had my clothing company over COVID. I remember I was like telling my mom and I was like, no, no, no. when we get to like when I <laughs> when we get to this level every day, then I'll be happy. And I remember oh, yeah. the sales started to get to that level, the number I had set. And I remember like getting it earlier in the day. You know, it's like earlier, earlier, earlier. And just sitting there and my mom being like, oh, my God, Sab, aren't you excited? And I was like, but what about tomorrow? But then what about and it was always because it wasn't. Like my friend Masha always says, she's like, are you running towards a goal or are you running away from fear? Because if you're running away from something, you're going to be fucking running forever. But if you're actually running towards a goal, you understand that it's going to take you a minute to get there. And I was like, damn, you don't got (laughs) deep. But like, dude, this was such a great conversation. Thank you for like (laughs) sitting here with me, shooting the shit. You have a new book out, don't you, ma'am? I do. I do. Can you tell us more about it? Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of that. It's. It reminds me very much of me, like uh, upon first glance, uh, slightly overwhelming, uh, l- a lot of color, a lot of chaos, drawings and pictures and <laughs> rainbows. And uh, and then it's like I hide, I hide nuggets in there, right? Which is kind of what my content is too. It's it's that like life is really hard and, and but here's a rainbow. Like <laughs> It's like I just want to let you know <laughs> you're doing okay. But life is the worst, and that's you know we we it's okay that that, that it's that way. I don't. It's normal. It's not okay, yeah. but it is the way that it is. Like life is just going to be hard, and there are going to be days that aren't it. And sometimes people just want to know other people feel the way they feel, and that's what yeah. the whole book is. It's like flip to any page, and you probably feel that way. <laughs> awesome! I'm excited. It'll be linked in the show notes for anybody yeah. to be able to grab or a, a you, copy, yeah. and they can purchase that from many a different places. But we'll mm-hmm. put it in the show notes specifically yes. so that they can find yeah. it. And where can people find you on the Instagrams and the TikToks yeah. and the, all of that? 
I'm at A-K-P-R-Z-Y everywhere. Uh, TikTok, Instagram, Fred's, uh, Lemonade, Clapper. I don't know. There's so many now. Uh, I just made sure to get them all. Call it a day so I could have at A-K-P-R-Z-Y exactly. everywhere. I just wanted to say one like really Please. quick thing. Um, talking about, you know, being a content creator and when you're saying, that finish line complex. When I hit a million followers, when I hit 600,000 followers, I'll be happy. This last month was probably the first time ever I I listened to this shit I've been saying for three years. And I, I said like, oh, this is where I'm going to be for a little while. Like, yeah, this is not, I do not need to go anywhere. This is where I'm at. I have a lot going on and I have an amazing community. And like, I had a, that, that convincing yourself that like, there's nothing there. There's nothing at a million. There's nothing at two million that like you don't have right. Oh, now. I thought I, I a and thousand like, percent can I, relate to. I, I just, I just like I, it's, it's in everything. But I think it was the first time I ever like really in this new life, in this yeah. new content, in this new internet life, where I was like, this is where I'm gonna stay for a minute. Yeah, like I'm cool, which is weird. Yeah, I trust me. I'm with you every day. I had to get that. I went to a TikTok. I was like, well, since you're not going to show our content anyways, and since you're just going to act as if I'm shadow banned all the time, I was like, I'm just going to walk away from this and stop putting my fucking worth into the fact that you're not showing it. Instead, I'll just keep knowing who the fuck I am and keep going on with my day. So, <laughs> Anna, thank you again so Thank much. you. Oh my gosh, this is wonderful. 